That's some big horns right there. That's a definite shooter. The roller coaster of emotions that I went through on that particular hunt is just out of this world. There's Jeff right up here on the road on top of the hill. I knew there was a vantage point. A big buck just jumped the fence. He's in the field. I'm going to let him come. Oh, no. Oh, no, there you go. He's headed back over towards the refuge. When he jumped that fence, I felt just devastated when I watched him jump. And I was just about ready to take the spot and scope off and, and go look somewhere else. And I looked back one more time, and he was jumping back onto the field. Holy smokes, is that a rub? That's a rub. Oh my word. That is a lot of rub. Winchester Whitetail Revolution host and Show Me State native Alan Treadwell's being shown what Kansas has to offer. And in Kansas, Treadwell will be hunting with Mr. Clay Young's Mexico Outfitters Unlimited and trophy whitetail guide, Jeff Woodworth. The main reason to come to Kansas for whitetail deer hunting I mean, all you have to do is check the record book, and uh, they're just lined up in there. We've got uh, unmatched genetics. We try not to shoot any deer under four and a half years of age, and we prefer them to be five or six. Your opportunity to kill the buck of a lifetime, I think, is better here than anywhere else in the world. It is to Kansas's credit that it ranks sixth in the Boone and Crockett records, and I say that because the states that are above it, like Wisconsin and Minnesota, they have had deer forever. Hunters have been hunting up there since I was a little boy, and that was a long time ago. But there have not been deer in Kansas forever. Deer population in Kansas has only come on in the last 15 or 20 years. So they have achieved their very lofty status in a relatively short period of time. You know, when you sit down at the beginning of the year trying to figure out where you're going to hunt in the fall, you know, one of the states that's always high on my radar is Kansas. So I got in touch with Jeff Woodworth and he said, heck yeah, man, he said, come on out. He said, I promise you, you'll see a lot of deer and a great chance of killing a big one if you come out and hunt with me. Good Lord, look at all the deer out there, Jeff. Yep, it's covered up, isn't it? You know, I'll be completely honest with you. Whenever you told me that, that we would see it between 100 and 150 deer on the field, I had my doubts. You know, you, you, you absolutely have to be surprised whenever you come up the first morning to go scout and you're not hunting and you're setting up looking at the field that you're going to be hunting and there's a hundred deer on it. I never thought I'd say it, but, but there's almost too many deer out there. Yeah, yeah, it can be different. There's a whole bunch of eyes and noses. And by glassing, you know, seeing all those deer out there, you know, we almost knew it was going to be impossible to be able to spot a deer and be able to slip in close enough for a shot. I would say the main thing uh, a guy wants to do before he gets ready to come on a rifle hunt in Kansas is become very, very, very familiar with your gun. Let's see how far that thing is. 103. That'll work. I want to shoot her one time to make sure the travel didn't do anything to it. Right in there, how to work. If you shoot all your bullets but one practice, then that's probably better than just shooting one and bringing the rest of the box. It's, a, it's very important that you become very familiar with your gun. That's just a quarter inch off center right there. I'm telling you what, that old Winchester Model 70 will shoot, buddy. He's got split threes on both sides, a big flyer off of his brow. Well, with those snow flurries out, the deer are on their feet and moving, and we've seen a couple of really good deer. I'll tell you what, we got a little weather in this morning, because this is a spot I'm definitely coming back, and that dude right there in a couple of years is going to be a giant. You know, you've heard it said before in several different states, if you don't like the weather, stick around a day, it'll change, and Kansas is no different. Warmed up the middle of the day, and we did some spotting and stalking, and we got pretty close to a lot of deer. Right there's a deer coming up from behind that tree. I'm not going to. 
going to be able to go much further back to the west. That wind, I'm just kind of angling it right here. We primarily are hunting agricultural fields that may be anywhere from 100 acres to four or 500 acres in size. And it can make a, a tough hunt, the visibility. You can see the deer you want to kill from a long ways away and just no way to get to him. And it turns into a waiting game and so forth. The little buck. All right, he's definitely not what I'm looking for. But that's where I want to be this evening, right there. You know, this is a little bit different of a hunt. Our, our main focus is on a big cut cornfield that has had, had winter wheat no-till drilled back into it. And it is wide open all the way around it. You know, getting in, being able to spot a deer and slip in on him is going to be almost next to impossible. Little buck out there feeding in that cut cornfield. Tell you right now, it seems to me the key to this hunt, as wide open as this area is and hard to stalk, you're gonna have to get up here, get right up here to these cottonwoods and get in early. You know, we were starting to get the deer dialed in. We'd seen some really good deer on the field and knew it was just a matter of time for a big mature buck got close enough to be able to kill. You talked about getting stuck in an open spot on this guy. Yeah. There's nothing we can do on him right now. No, we just gotta be as still as we can. Winchester's Whitetail Revolution is brought to you by Winchester Ammunition, the American legend. Code Blue, perfecting the science of hunting. Winchester Repeating Arms, the guns that work. Redfield, the soul of the American hunter. And by Browning, the best there is. Good gracious, that deer's gonna be huge in a couple of years. He's a beautiful buck. That mule deer would be a shooter, but this duo is spinning its wheels trying to figure out these big post-rut Kansas whitetails. The big bucks knew the rut was over with and they had one thing on their mind and that's getting that body weight back up so they can make it through these winters. He's gonna feed, he still has to feed, he's gotta put his winter weight back on, especially if it starts to get cold, he's gonna get up and feed midday. So we elected to really concentrate on this this cut cornfield and try to see what was in the field, you know, see if there's something we can make a stock on. I mean, I would not recommend it for a novice hunter, but it is a, a super, super fun and effective way to kill a giant because you can see so far here in Kansas. Now, the, the only problem is it's, it's, it's a huge field. Uh, the deer are on it every night, but getting within shooting range of one of them is not a given by any means. There's no doubt that deer is definitely mature. It, he'd be a tough one to let walk by. There he is. He's coming out right down there in that thick stuff, Jeff. That is a good deer. Can you tell if he's an eight or a nine? I can't tell yet. I think he's just an eight, but definitely a five and a half or better year old buck. The main management thing in Kansas, again, is the age. And if I can convince my hunters to wait till they see a deer that's five and a half years old, they're really going to like what he has on his head. And there's no mistake when you see a four and a half, five and a half year old whitetail. That deer is going to have the drop belly, longer body, great big heavy neck, the grayer face. You know, that deer might only be 135, 40 inches. He may be 160 or 70, but the maturity of that whitetail will show in his body. There's no doubt that that deer is definitely mature. Yeah, he's a mature buck. Yeah, he talked about getting stuck in an open spot on this guy. Yeah. There's nothing we can do on him right now. No, we just got to be as still as we can. We got that sun behind us, so help us. He ought to be Here coming. He Here he comes. He's fixing to jump, isn't he? Coming out. Holy smokes, look at that deer. There he goes, back onto the refuge. Yeah. He's no dummy, but he was out here well in the, after sunrise. You know, we could be below zero with blowing snow sideways, blizzard conditions, or we could be dealing with what we are on some of the hunt right here. You know, it's been 60 degrees up in the middle of the day, but the good news, the moon is absolutely perfect, and the deer are, are reacting to it, and we're seeing big deer move in the middle of the day. It's all about shooting for the moon phase. David Morris reveals his secrets in this Tecumani Trophy Tip. Hi, I'm David Morris, and I want to talk to you today about planning your hunts around two particular moon phases. One is the dark moon, or the new moon they call it, it's when there's no moon, and the other is the full moon. These are the moon phases that tend to have the greatest impact on your hunting. When you're hunting feeding patterns, try to plan your trip around the new moon and avoid the full moon. When you're hunting rutting activity, I don't mind hunting the full moon, but I don't really mind hunting the new moon either or the dark moon, but I try to avoid at all costs hunting feeding patterns during the full moon, during the pre-rut or the post-rut. 
To continue this and other conversations with David, go to techamati.com. Look at look at the size of this scrape. I, I don't know if you can tell, but that is uh, that's five foot around. And then if that if that's not amazing enough, look right here. That's got to be one of the biggest grubs I've ever seen in my life. You know, we kind of had to trust our, our our instincts and get in there and set up and hope that the deer would come to us. It's uh, it's it's time like this that that allows the Kansas hunter to pass 140 inch deer. Exactly right. Sharpen up your woodsman skills. Um, notice things, notice rubs, notice scrapes. Just become part of the outdoors. Every opportunity you get to hunt, you'll learn something. I mean, when you know that there's something giant in there, it, uh, it does encourage you to let the little bucks walk. I feel like with that many deer in the area and the lack of pressure that these deer have had, there's gotta be some really big deer around somewhere. And if we just put in our time, put in our effort, you know, we're gonna be rewarded for our persistence. Well, this is a big old field right up here where we seen that buck this morning. Right, 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 right on that hillside. Well, they've been out here, look at all the tracks everywhere. Yeah, yes they have. They, they love the corn, it's almost like candy to them. And then when you mix the wheat right into it, it's really dynamite. I think those bucks have got to come to a food source and try to get some of the calories built back up that they lost chasing. Exactly right. They're still somewhat interested in the does, but mainly they're going to come down here and get fed back up because they're a little run down right now. Look there and gap behind them trees. That's some big horns right there. That's a definite shooter. Good Lord, I hope he comes over here. Holy smokes, he's going to be a giant one of these days. Where else in Kansas can you stalk within 100 yards of a mature buck? The answer might be hard to find. With few places in the country to do that, Alan Treadwell's with the right outfitter to find a trophy whitetail buck in Kansas. Make sure that outfitter has a good reputation because you can spend thousands of dollars year after year and never get, get a chance at a big whitetail where an outfitter is going to get you into whitetails as soon as you arrive. They're going to have all the stuff done that might take you years to put together they're going to have all ready for you right there. This is his home turf. He knows what the history is, the movement patterns are, the weather conditions, how they influence deer patterns. You better listen to your guide so it becomes a team effort. Jeff and I are clicking pretty good, you know. Uh, both of us are from the same school of thought when it comes to hunting whitetail deer, and that's really important, and it's just been awesome. I mean, it's so wide open. We probably could get back up in these cottonwoods and just just hunker down maybe for, for an evening or two. Right. I, you know, I got some code blue urge powder. You think we could dump it out here and see if we could concentrate them deer to a certain area? You know, on 300 acres of corn, anything that'll bring them to, to our end, we ought to give it a try. My management practices consist of uh, a lot of supplemental feeding, not necessarily to supplement the antler growth, but to keep the deer where we want them. We had to, we had to figure a way to get the deer to come to one area, come to us, if we were gonna be successful. And luckily, Kansas is one of those states where you can put out a tractor. I mean, they're coming to the field. All we're trying to do with this stuff is get them in the shooting range. Right. I'm supposed to put this stuff on a stump, but I sure don't see a stump out here. But I think put her in a pile out I've here. got a pile of it on the ground. Yeah. I believe that ought to pull them in. We'll see how good this stuff really is. You know, a lot of times a big buck won't even come to an attractor. You know, the does will come in there, but the big buck feels comfortable with the does in the area. You know, almost kind of like confidence decoy. Well, this stuff smells good, it don't does it? It does sweet smelling. I guarantee you them old deer will be able to smell that. Well, let's get out of here. We got just a couple hours. We'll go grab a bite to eat and then come back and get set up in those cottonwoods. Felt like one of those evenings that was going to be good. I had high hopes. We've been in the area a few days, and uh, that evening we got in there and got set up just exactly like I wanted to. Yeah, them deer on their feet early. You know, so we used some of that cold blue urge powder and put it out, and sure enough, man, the doe started piling into the field, coming out of the bedding area, coming out of the refuge, coming over to us, working just like a charm. And right on the fence line, you see this big buck standing there. Get there and get behind him too. That's some big horns out there. That's a definite shooter. And it didn't take very long looking through those red filled binoculars before I knew that that was the deer that I wanted to kill. To, to be able to determine minor details like the belly drop in a deer or whether his neck is really big, fully mature, what those antlers look like, definitely optics makes a big difference when it comes to determining those factors. Nothing, nothing makes me laugh any quicker than a guy coming in with a pair of cheap binoculars because that's what's going to allow you to glass. And the more time you spend glassing, the more things you're going to see. Good gracious, look at that thing. Good Lord, I hope he comes over here. We got absolutely nothing we can do right now but just sit here and wait. 
You know, a big buck has is, is got to make sure that everything is fine and dandy before he crosses that fence to come out in the field and start feeding. Truck. There's Jeff right up there on the road on top of the hill. And we're sitting there, you know, watching all these deer come in, and I look up on the hill, and I see a white truck up there, and, I, and it's Jeff. Yeah, after I dropped Alan off, I knew there was a vantage point not quite a mile away from Alan. Got this broad scope out the window. In fact, I know we can see that buck where he'd already be gone. And he sees this big deer in the fence line, and I know he sees him because he's not leaving. Jeff's wanting to see the show just like we are. A big buck just jumped the fence. He's in the field. I'm going to let him come. Oh no, oh no, there you go. He's headed back over towards the refuge. Winchester's Whitetail Revolution is brought to you by Winchester Ammunition, the American legend. Code Blue, perfecting the science of hunting. Winchester Repeating Arms, the guns that work. Redfield, the soul of the American hunter. And by Browning, the best there is. Alan has stalked into position. Jeff's looking down from the hill, and both are glassing a big fence row buck. That's a definite shooter. And this deer's sitting there looking around, and you know, he's feeling like he wants to come out, and I can't believe that he's here this early. Three o'clock in the afternoon for a big mature buck to be on his feet, coming into the field is kind of unheard of. Holy cow, look at him compared to that other buck. He is absolutely huge. Talk about buck fever. You know, with those cedars behind him and that big white rack, and then he gets next to a 130 inch eight pointer. You know, good, respectable deer standing next to him that looks like a baby. I see a, a number of deer shot every year, and I hunt myself a bunch, and buck fever is something I thought I was over, but I had to lean away from the door because I was making the spot and scope shake so much. He just dwarfs that other buck. That's a good buck right there beside him. I mean, I'm getting excited. You know, he's looking there, and I, I know it's just a matter of time before he does, just like every other deer. But as luck would have it, you know, 3 o'clock in the afternoon, the farmer's making his usual rounds of an evening, and he comes driving down the road. Here comes a truck coming right down the edge of the field right there. Oh, no. Goodness gracious, there they go. Are you kidding me? Look at them. Right back into the cedars, every single one of them. And I'm thinking our, our goose is cooked. He's gone. He's back in the bedding area. We're never going to see him again. But on the flip side, you know, this is his livelihood. We're, we're visitors on his ground. You know, the more I started thinking about, the easier I started feeling about it. Hey, you know, it's, it's all right. It's still way early in the hunt. This deer may come back. And that sucker stayed right there in that one area. Oh, wait, wait, that big buck is still there. He's still over there in the cedars. But just sit here and wait. Once that evening started progressing on and the deer started calling back down, you know, does started trickling back in the field and they come out to that code blue urge powder that we'd put out and they're sitting there, not a care in the world, and this big buck's seeing that. A big buck just jumped the fence. He's in the field. Three hundred and seventy yards. Every hunter knows the secret to success in the field is all about great optics, and that's how come I reach for Redfield for all of my optic needs. When that big buck comes out at two, maybe 300 yards away, I want to know exactly how far he is so I can make the best shot possible. Reach in my pocket for my Redfield range finders with one button and easy target acquisition, I know exactly how far he is so I can make a great shot on him. At less than four inches long, weighing in at less than five ounces, it's the perfect range finder to have around your neck when that opportunity arises. He's, he's, he's headed our way. He's 370 yards, which is a makeable shot, but I looked down at my watch and we still had over an hour of daylight left. So I'm gonna let him come. Oh no, oh no, there you go. He's headed back over towards the refuge. And he turns complete 90 degrees, gets behind some brush where we can't see him anymore, and now he's inside that 200 yards that I want him in, but he's through a bunch of thick stuff, and all you can see is he's racked. Ah, oh, he went back in. Are you kidding me, why? When he left the field again, my heart sank, and I was just about ready to take the spot and scope off and, and go look somewhere else, and I looked back one more time, and he was jumping back onto the field. He jumped the fence. Here he comes. He's coming this time. Every step he takes, I think the more nervous I get. He's in with us, those deer. I gotta let him clear. Oh, no. I feel a gust of wind hit me in the back of the neck, and out of the corner of my eye, I see deer starting to get nervous and start to get jumpy, and they started to leave. From a distance like that, I'm thinking to myself, go ahead, shoot, shoot, shoot. He's in with us, those deer. I gotta let him clear. And there's a fawn pretty close to this buck, and I didn't realize how close it looked in camera till later on. And from my angle, he was a clean, clear shot, and I had no doubt in my mind that that buck was going down when I pulled the trigger. 
All right, as soon as that last deer gets up from behind him, I'm gonna take him. Here we go. He's down. <laughs> Holy smokes. What a Kansas whitetail. Are you kidding me? And finally, I saw the deer's belly hit the ground and all the other deer run off. And a couple of seconds later, I heard the boom. I, I knew he'd done the deed and it, it was just a great show for me. This buck right here is proof positive why I love shooting the Winchester ballistic silver tips because as soon as that bullet hit him, it went in there and created so much drama straight down. And we as hunters owe it to the animals that we hunt to be able to kill them as quickly and as cleanly as possible. There comes Jeff right there. It's so much fun to kill a big deer, but when you can experience it and share it with somebody else, it just makes it that much more special. And Jeff to be able to be there for that initial recovery with me was one of the coolest parts of the hunt. Jeff Woodward. Congratulations. I appreciate it, man. Wonderful hunt. Mexico Outfit and Unlimited, what a deal. Well, it's been a tough season. I'm not gonna make any excuses, but congratulations, Alan Treadwell. You got the Whopper buck this year, and uh, my hat's off to you. I have to look straight at the camera and tell you that. As much as I hate you, but congrats.